My talk will be about uh, okay. about uh, decryption failure attacks on post quantum uh, crypto primitives with error cracking codes. And uh, we ha uh, the first part is a joint work with Thomas Janssen and Paul Stankowski, and the second part is a joint work with Thomas Janssen and Yang Jing. Uh, all my co authors are from Lund University, Sweden. Uh, okay, so this is uh, outline. Uh, I will uh, talk about uh, motivation and then two applications, one on code-based scheme QCMDPC, another is on a lattice-based scheme LAC, and then uh, last I will conclude the, the talk. So, okay, so motivation. Uh, we all know that uh, because of Shor's algorithm, so quantum computers break crypto system based on the hardness of factoring and the discrete lock. Uh, now we have uh, uh, post-quantum candidates, uh, like uh, lattice-based, code-based, and hash-based, and multi based and uh, isogeny-based. Uh, the current, one of the current focuses in crypto uh, communities, uh, the least uh, uh, post-quantum uh, standardization efforts. So now uh, this is uh, in round, uh, uh, now it's uh, round two has started. So. Uh, we have, you see that uh, um, lattice-based uh, crypto system are very uh, like, uh, interesting because uh, we have almost half of proposals are from lattice-based. And uh, code-based and isogeny-based are good for encryption, hash-based and multi write based are good for signatures. So I will talk about uh, yeah, encryption. Uh, so for encryption, usually we have two security, we have uh, Secure goals like uh, indice C, indice P. If we want to achieve, uh, if if we want to use ephemeral keys, uh, indice C, SMP is enough. But if we want to use uh, static keys, we need to achieve indice C. So we need to use some uh, CC transforms like uh, Fujisaki, Oko, Mato, Kobara, Imai, and uh, this after this uh, uh, transform, these uh, intermediate values will be uh, protected by hash functions, so we cannot modify it uh, arbitrarily. Uh, then, uh, in this proof, we uh, the decryption failure rate need to be uh, negligible. The, I mean, in a symptotic sense, negligible is defined well defined, but uh, uh, considering this um, parameter setting, um, yeah, this always. Uh, problem that uh, what is the security margin and uh, what is uh, yeah, the best uh, way to achieve uh, performance also achieve security. Uh, in recent trend, uh, in the uh, NIST proposals, one trend is like uh, uh, in lattice-based scheme, we can use uh, error correct code to reduce uh, the decrease in failure rate, which means that for one position, we can allow it with uh, larger uh, error probability, but uh, then we use uh, uh, error can codes like BCH codes, then the f overall decryption failure rate will be very low. So uh, the extreme design is uh, lack. Uh, so the problem is uh, how to extract the secret key from decryption errors, because uh, uh, even in the round two submission of lack, the authors still argue that it is difficult to get any information about private key. Uh, from these decryption failures, uh, they argue that uh, uh, we can what we can get is only oh, we know that there are more errors than the error correcting capability. But uh, where is the error, and uh, can we do state analysis? It's uh, yeah, the answer is hard. But uh, we found that uh, actually this problem is quite uh, sim uh, not quite, but uh, has some similarity uh, with. Uh, work we did uh, three years ago is an attack on QCMDPC, a code-based scheme. So I put it together to show the, uh, the similarity. So, okay. Uh, the attack scheme is called the reaction attack. So Alice will send the message to Bob and uh, use Bob's public key and Bob will decrypt and tell Alice that uh, if this, is, uh, uh, this uh, decryption is success or not. So in terms of uh, security, Model definition, this is called reaction attack. Actually, this is a uh, weaker model than CC, but because in CC, this uh, decryption algorithm may say that, okay, uh, may tell you this uh, uh, wrong message decoded too, but uh, this is some information that can be easily blocked. So 
uh, for many schemes, I think for all the schemes I see in the NIST PQ project, the two models are same, equivalent. Uh, this, uh, our attack on QCMD PC was first published at the Asia Clip 2016. Uh, it's before the NISP PQ project. So uh, for this QC MTPC, they have a proposal called bike, and uh, in the first round, they only proposed uh, ephemeral case due to this uh, attack. And uh, in round two submission, they also include the static key. Here, I do not claim that we have solved any uh, new instance of uh, bike to so, uh, round two bike, so uh, that's something <laughs> important to be made clear. <laughs> Uh, for lack, uh, our main focus is on uh, sorry, is on uh, round one lack because uh, we only know the concrete proposal of round two lack for about uh, one month. So uh, for our results, like we can in similar in serial estimation, we can recover one private key amount to two forty two users with complexity two to ninety seventy nine and the pre-computation cost of two to one hundred sixty two. Uh, we did extensive simulations that uh, sup, uh, supports, uh, simulation supports the estimation. And uh, we also show ideas and the results that uh, strongly indicating that uh, LAC uh, 256 in round two submission is also vulnerable to this attack. So, um, no quantum, any claimed complex, no complex number is in the classic setting. So LAC uh, 256 is for uh, 256 bit security. Okay, uh, this is uh, QCMDPC. Uh, code based uh, crypto system starting from my key list from uh, using binary GOPA codes, and uh, it's very secure and uh, very good. Uh, the main drawbacks is uh, it has a huge uh, key size. So uh, in ISIT 2000, 13, Misowski, Tillich, and Sandria Barreto, they proposed an important variant called the QCMDPC. Uh, it has much smaller key size and good security arguments and also easy implementation. Uh, yeah, this is uh, key size, it's very small. So I just say I use uh, this parameter for implementation, so uh, it's not important to, to rem remember this. Uh, what is QCMDPC? Uh, QCMDPC we start from QCMD PC codes. Uh, for QC cyclic codes, it's a uh, linear code that uh, uh, if every cyclic shift of code word by N0 steps, it remains a code word. So uh, we will assume that N0 is two, so we can write the per ch check matrix in this form, and uh, we have a general matrix uh, here, H1, we assume H1 is invertible. And uh, then this operation, like, like this uh, inverse can be wheeled uh, in polynomial ring, uh, this polynomial ring, and uh, this polynomial can also uh, be represented by vector. So same vector and uh, polynomial and uh, matrix here. So uh, LDPC is a linear code with a sparse uh, parity check matrix, everyone knows that, and uh, for moderate, uh, Density uh, parity check code MDPC is a code with a denser but still sparse uh, parity check uh, matrix, and the QC MDPC is just the QC cyclic MDPC code. So this is the scheme for key, key generation. We generate a parity check matrix, and this is uh, sparse because we have a small low weight, low weight, low weight, and then we derive this systematic uh, generator matrix, and this is dense because. Uh, of this, uh, uh, yeah, this, uh, it, uh, this operation, it's a dense matrix P. So the public key is this dense matrix and private key is a sparse matrix. And for encoding, it's like we generate a random error vector with a small weight and uh, we compute a ciphertext. It's just like a code word transform in the channel. So uh, transmission in the channel. So for decoding, we compute the syndrome and uh, use the iterative decoder. Here we can use like Gallag Gallag decoder or some advanced decoder. But the implementation, we use Gallag B, so decoding rate is uh, it's good for implementation. Um, uh, the CC conversion makes this E to be very random and uh, makes this E to be random and we cannot uh, control, them, uh, control it. Uh, we use iterative decoding, so this, uh, actually the, the practical performance is hard to predict, predict so uh, 
usually we use simulated error performance, it's like 10 to minus eight, it's really hard to propose uh, yeah, parameters for uh, this uh, error rate to be very, very small. Um, if we want to do attack, we introduce a key related property called distance spectrum. Here, distance spectrum is just uh, for distance. If uh, exists a pair of ones with distance d in this, uh, uh, then uh, this is uh, uh, in this distance spectrum. Otherwise, it's not in this <coughs> distance spectrum. This, this nodes includes all cyclic shifts of each zero, and uh, because uh, one distance can appear many times, so we include the multiplicity. For instance, this pattern, the length is seven, so we have uh, three possible distance, and uh, uh, you know we have the pattern one one, and we have pan pattern one or oh, oh, one uh, twice, so uh, this is one, this is two, but uh, this we don't have one or oh, one, so this is zero. Uh, now we know, if we know the distance spectrum, then we can recover the private key. This is, this is uh, not trivial, but we have uh, some algorithm. It uh, is implemented. It's very uh, good. It, the performance is very good. Uh, so the, it's not the hard part. The hard part is to recover the distance spectrum, how to recover the, we need to build a good distinguisher to, to recover this uh, distance spectrum. So what we do is like we form different uh, subsets with design error pattern. So given the distance, we just choose as a pattern that uh, uh, contain at least uh, uh, one occurrence of distance d. If not, we discard that part pattern, so we have uh, many uh, subsets, and then we test the decryption failure rate for this, um, these uh, subsets. We can see that uh, this is uh, uh, experimental uh, results, and we do 10, for, uh, 10 simulations, and this is worst case. Uh, so we see that uh, this, uh, we can classify the, uh, the uh, the multiplicity according to, this, according to its decoding uh, error probability, then we can recover the distance spectrum, then we can recover, do the full key recovery. This is the first case, then uh, next uh, is a lattice-based uh, scheme, LAC. Uh, LAC is, this is a proposed uh, par uh, parameters, and the LAC is uh, extreme design, so it choose uh, Q to be very small, it's, uh, it's uh, for other lattice-based schemes, they, they usually choose Q to be uh, several thousand. So, um, here we see this is a lack noise uh, noise polynomial. Uh, this is uh, also this is a vector. So we can see that uh, uh, for what we can think that uh, uh, the every every vector is uh, generated according to this distribution that uh, with probability one over four, it's one or minus one, and with property one and a half, it's uh, uh, zero. So we can s we can treat every um, position as a sum of uh, some uh, as a Gaussian distribution with mean zero or some uh, variance. But uh, uh, we can also compute the distribution uh, exactly. So for position error, because the Q is very small, if uh, uh, this entry is if the, the uh, if one position uh, w i is uh, larger than this value in absolute value, uh, it's larger than 62 or minus uh, 60, uh, smaller than minus 62, then this, there's a position error, the error property is very large, it's uh, two to minus 7.44. And they, uh, then they use the VCH code to correct up to 55 errors. So uh, the error, the frame error is like, uh, we have more than 56 uh, uh, position errors. So the decryption failure rate is very low, it's two to minus 115 in the analysis. And another thing to mention is like they use this range, so uh, if we do this modular uh, modular XM plus one operation, then we need to change sign for some position. So uh, we will consider a weak key attack model because uh, in the NIST uh, um, computation, they have uh, attack constraints, like uh, we can only call one decryption oracle for about two to 64 times at most. So in that case, if we, if we have, uh, have this small decryption uh, failure rate, we, it's uh, with very, very small probability to have got uh, only one error. So, so we need to use, uh, to use pre-computation to establish weak cipher text and also consider some weak key property. What we do is uh, we uh, 
like this. So this sample is a hash function. So we, we cannot. We need this e1 to have some uh, to have some property, but uh, we cannot c uh, like uh, have this and uh, and uh, invert and uh, invert it because uh, this is a hash function. So we what we can do is just we uh, we generate and generate and if. If this ha satisfies prop uh, properties, then we keep it. If not, then we just uh, discard it. So uh, then we have a set. Have a set. Then we sa submit this weak cipher text to multiple keys to for decryption. If if the, the, we are lucky, we submit it to the weak key. Then we have a very large decryption value rate. This is a weak key detection. The last step is we do a statistical analysis to extract one weak secret key. So we can start with uh, keys with largest decryption failure rate, and then we uh, work on the second largest, uh, and so on. So we can also do uh, some adaptive attack. It's, uh, the reason is like this weak key detection is, uh, is easy, and this uh, key recovery is hard. We need more, more uh, encryption, the decryptions for and uh, and also this step we can only do we need only to do for one or few wikis, but for this step we need to submit uh, many keys in maybe a two two sixty four. So so in this case we can do some uh, adaptive attacks to balance the, the complexity of these two steps. Uh, so this is a wiki property we choose. We choose that uh, this sum is larger than. Uh, Delta zero, delta zero is a positive integer. If we choose delta zero to be 208, then the probability is about uh, uh, 22 minus 64. This, so this is the weak key uh, probability. Then for weak ciphertext, we have two types of uh, weak ciphertext. Uh, the type one is uh, E1 contains an interval of some consecutive L1 all positive or negative entries. So we have L1 all one or L1 or minus one, because we only have uh, one minus one and zero. Uh, type two is like we, we allow some zeros in this uh, controlled section, but uh, we, by, by default, we consider uh, type one in the latest in la uh, throughout this uh, talk. So we can see that uh, if we choose this, then uh, if we set the, com uh, the pre-computation complexity to, uh, to find one cipher text, it's two to 116, then we can uh, get uh, error property to be one, two two minus six point six. If if it's uh, two hundred twenty, it's two two minus uh, twelve point two. This this number should be uh, compiled with this. Uh, oh, sorry. Should be compiled with with this number. So, so this uh, this for this weak key and with weak cipher text the. Error property is very, really, really, really large. So, how to do uh, uh, key recovery? I will introduce a key-related property called contribution vector. Uh, uh, we can uh, we can shift this to the to this, this controlled uh, vector uh, controlled interval to to uh, starting position is zero. So, in that case, uh, this CVI we can compute the vector. This CVI CVI is uh, is just uh, uh, some consecutive, uh, uh, the summation of consecutive uh, L1 positions of SI, or, or we need to uh, change sign if uh, we do some modular operation. Okay. So um, this is a uh, way, we also assume that uh, if we get this, uh, not assume, it's really if we get this contribution vector, it's easy to recover the key. So the hard part is to recover the, uh, what do we do is like we look at this E2 part, uh, because if uh, this for this CVI, if it is large, then then with higher prob uh, probability, this uh, uh, position will be erroneous. Then, if the position is erroneous, then with higher probability, EI will be one. So uh, here uh, we can we assume that uh, we inserted a positive uh, value in this case. So uh, so this is some experimental results. Really did uh, a lot of <laughs> implementations and. Uh, we can see that the correlation is very strong, and actually we can, yeah, uh, the estimation is about two to 34 decryption errors, and uh, uh, this is, if we have two to 28, we can recover 47%, and uh, um, we uh, now can recover 65%, so if we have this, we expect that we can recover all. And for L is 62, we can recover, uh, uh, yeah, the 
for do a full recovery. So uh, how to interpret? We see that uh, this uh, lacks aimed for uh, 500. 56 bits uh, for so if if we are we in the single case single key case if we uh, we are lucky we send to the the key uh, the the weak key then we attack it with the practical complexity uh, but uh, the success probability only the the key uh, the weak key prop, uh, success probability is about two to minus 64 for multiple users we can every amortize the complexity and the comp uh, we can recover one private key among 264 euros and we complex it. So, okay. okay. So for lac two, uh, lac two have a main difference, may affect this attack. They use a fixed weight, dis weight distribution for S, E, and E1 and R. So uh, it, it seems hard to have this uh, sum of uh, SI to be a large number, but uh, what we do is we can separate the index set as the even and odd part, and uh, we also have we also can have a big uh, contribution uh, vector entry in this position and uh, lead to a very large uh, error probability. Yeah. So concluding remarks. <laughs> so we uh, we. It's clear that decryption failures can reveal the secret key even if error correcting codes are applied and uh, uh, we need to design some key related property and do statistics attacks to extract this, uh, these, uh, prop these properties. For instance, the distance spectrum for QCM, TPC and uh, the contribution vectors for lack. And uh, the future work is to find more applications. Yeah, thanks. Uh, okay, so this is reference and uh, thank you. Thank you.